Like many of you, Smith Rock is one of my favorite places on earth. I've crawled around its trails more times than I can count. But little did I know, and little did scientists even know until fairly recently, that Smith Rock is actually a predecessor to one of my other favorite places on earth, Yellowstone. Kerry Gordon, an Oregon master naturalist, and the Smith Rock Park manager, Matt Davey, helped break it down for us. Oh, I'd say we had a big, huge eruption. It's called a caldera. What geologists like to call it is a, a super volcano. It was, this thing was way bigger than Mount St. Helens would have been. So a caldera is kind of a unique feature. A caldera is an eruption that's a collapse feature, like, like a souffle collapsing. Calderas are responsible for some of the most catastrophic eruptions in our more than four billion year history. And what you had was a bed of magma down way beneath the Earth's surface that had small um, faults coming back up through it. And as it depressurized, the top ground, the, the top base of the, the ground collapsed in and hit that superheated Earth and exploded back up and then fell back on top of itself as well as blowing ash every which way. And so it would have been a gigantic explosion. The Crooked River Caldera created what we today call Smith Rock. And as it fell back in on itself, it was super hot and it fused together. And that's what we get here behind us. This big rock wall here is called Welded Tuft. And it's welded because it's this ash and pumice and all sorts of other rocks that when super hot, fused back together. But of course I hear what you're asking. I mean, how is this a predecessor to Yellowstone? Well, for that, we're gonna need a surfboard. Kind of. The Hawaiian Islands didn't form along a tectonic plate boundary. They formed over what is called a hot spot. Five million years ago, the lava coming from this mostly stationary plume created the island of Kauai. As the plate shifted northwest, it created more islands, with the big island, its most recent, being formed a little over a million years ago. Well, that same plume and plate process is what led the Crooked River caldera that is 29 million years old and now extinct to give way to Old Faithful. Because we've got the North American plate sliding over the top of this plume, now this plume is thought to be the heat source for Yellowstone. So what created Smith Rock was not the same process as what created the Cascade Mountains. The Cascades are a totally different heat source than what happened for the Crooked River Caldera. Once the caldera blew, how did we end up with such an amazing towering site like Smith Rock? So what we're literally seeing is, is material that is a little harder to erode. And that's why in this end of the caldera, we have a bit more of a cool visual to see. But this is only the western edge of the Crooked River caldera. It stretches from here to the other side of Prineville, which is good 22 miles away. And it has a width of stretching from Powell Butte to Grizzly. So Gray Butte, Powell Butte, Grizzly to the little pilot, pilot butte that's on the other side of Prineville. It's a big feature. And this mammoth feature has been around almost as long as, well, the mammoth. This, this area has been used for millennia by uh, the, nor the Northern Paiute tribes, uh, the Tenido Band off the, wo the Warm Springs Reservation. It's, people have been using this area um, as both a, you know, a hunting ground, as a, as a, a, a summer camp um, for thousands and thousands of years. So could Smith Rock become another Yellowstone someday in the future? We had our own hot springs 29 and a half million years ago. Wouldn't have that be cool to have hot springs? But no, heat source for those, long gone. From Smith Rock, where I really would not like to have been 29 million years ago, I'm meteorologist Scott Elmas. <laughs>